guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Max, I'm the fast-talking flipper. Angie's my better half. She's inside fixing Judy lunch because it's that time of day. Judy just got back from dialysis, so she's hungaries and uh, just trying to get things kicked off with her in there. I just came outside to, uh, to do all of our pulls because we have to get stuff shipped. If we're gonna get it out for the mail lady and get it in the mail today, gotta do that before the mail lady gets here. Otherwise, we have to run it down. And we don't like to do that because we're lazy, that kind of thing. Uh, we are resellers. We are here in the Cincinnati market, just in southeastern Indiana, about half an hour from downtown Cincinnati, and we buy things locally. Yard sales, estate sales, thrift stores, that kind of thing. Auctions, you name it, we'll buy it, and then we'll put it online and sell it for more at a profit. That's our goal, and this is tracking our journey and how all of that looks. This video outlines our midweek sales and how things have sold for us um, you know, over the, the course of the middle of the week and tracking how things are going. Sales are picking back up. We, you know, we've been listing more. We've been more routinely getting on things and staying more and more active with the app and more and more active with eBay. We had fallen off there for a while and our sales suffered. Not even gonna lie, it was my fault. I'm not gonna point any fingers at eBay or say, you know, there was tin foil kind of stuff going on. It was my fault. We didn't do the right things. And as such, our sales suffered. You'll see a lot of other people say, ah, oh, YouTube is, or YouTube, you, they'll say eBay is broken and they'll blame everybody but themselves, but some self reflection will tell you that, hey, it is actually you. So uh, today I've got six orders going out for $190.65. I did have a PayPal order, but I've already shipped it. I wanted to get it out. Um, it came in overnight, actually, after yesterday's filming and into today's, and that was a $175 order. So we've had, you know, some good sales. Six orders for $190.65. Let me go ahead and get these pulled so I can get them on the table and get them ready to ship. Nothing, you know, nothing spectacular, but some decent stuff. Uh, some vintage Tupperware. We actually pulled these out of our inventory because we were going through Judy's stuff and trying to make some, um, some room for some Tupperware of our own and found that we had some of these vintage Tupperware in there. Yeah, stuff like this. If you can get um, these right colors, these pastels, and that you know that they're old and no longer being made, you can make some decent money on them because you can usually pick those up at yard sales for you know a quarter, 50 cents, something like that. I don't recommend pulling a Kevin and buying a ton of Tupperware, but you know, if you're looking for inventory and you don't mind how much things sell for, because we don't like to sell things under $20, that's kind of our threshold is where we want to be. If something is sells quickly and it's like 10, 15 bucks, you know, and I'm talking quick, like days, a couple, three, four days. Yes, we'll list it. We'll definitely list it. Um, you'll see things that we sell here, especially like the next one is a perfect example. And it's been listed for a long time. We have since shifted that model and said that, you know, it has to be at least 20 bucks. We used to be at 10, but now we're up to 20. So that's kind of where we want to target because we are limited on space. And if we continue to grow and continue to speed up like we had been, we would run out of space quickly. So with these, our Tupperware items sold, there's three nesting bowls in there, sold for $20 plus shipping going out of here. $19.99 plus shipping is what that is. Next one, what? is that i one oh i what i don't know if this is correct correct it is it says it's an i1 but i don't know it is a skylander skylanders skylanders uh it's the little base the little thing that they sit on and it says it's up here we don't put a lot of stuff and oh, there is a bunch of stuff up there. It's heavy. Okay, holy crap. There was a whole bunch of Skylander stuff up in there, and that's what it is. It's just one of the base that you put the Skylanders on. Uh, I don't I, We got this in one of our buyouts, a, a um, reseller. We bought out another reseller and we got that. So, and we've had it for a while. We've had it for like a year and a half now because I can tell because of where the picture was, $8.95. Eh, that's the perfect example. You know, if it was in today's and the same one here, if that was today's stuff, we would buy that and probably group it up and sell it locally um, or group it up and sell it at our yard sale. We wouldn't list that individually. My next item is down here in TB3. <laughs> what is it? It's this. Right there. It is a loot crate dealio. Oh, it's actually two of them. It's that guy and yeah, the one that was below it. The Hulk. It is Spotterman's and the Hulk. Those two. And I could tell by the picture that we had had it for a long time. So I went ahead and took an offer on it and it was for $6. 
plus shipping. So, you know, we're not going to be too bad. That's an easy shipper, guys. We're going to take some cardboard. I'll get, take some of my scrap cardboard over there and I'll throw it in one of these to give it a uh, solid backing. And then I'll slide that right in there with it. And that'll be good to go. It'll be safe to get there. Super easy. Uh, vintage hip top CDs. Hip hop, hip hop anonymous. O3 is where I'm going. Let me put my slippers back. I like to keep some slippers out here. So if I, you know, if it's dirty out in the yard and I see them tracking stuff everywhere in here, I can slip on the slippers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess it's this giant stack. Not sure. Not sure. Look at it. Did you just look at it? That's a lot. Mm -hmm. I think Angie listed these. We got, we did a buyout and we got a bunch of random rap CDs. And I wouldn't have thought, you know, CDs would sell for very much, right? You would just be like, oh, those don't sell for much. Um, but man, we sold some CDs for like 30, 40 bucks a pop. It was, it was pretty good. Uh, if you can get, you know, random stuff like this, that's old you know, Grand Funk Railroad. Uh, I have no idea who that is. No, I, I don't know any of these guys. I ain't even going to try to the alcoholics. Uh, there, I saw there was some DJ Jazzy Jeff in there. That kind of stuff. The rare stuff. Uh, that lot, these CDs right here, $68.97. So not a bad sale. Angie wrapped them individually. If you want to keep the jewel cases from getting scratched or, you know, trying to, not trying to break, but keep them from scratching against each other, especially if they're going to move around a lot. That's the way to do it. It does cost you a little bit extra because each one of these costs a little bit of money, but you know, you're an extra 30 cents into that. Maybe not much, not much at all. It'd be easy to ship that because we'll put it in one of these little boxes that we have and ship it on out. And it goes media mail. That's even better too. So did we sell, what is this? I don't remember. I remember getting these, but I don't remember getting them. I don't remember what we paid for them. There's like a stack of them. It is a, um, a bag. Uh, Star Wars baggy. Star Wars baggy. There they are. They were new. And you can see they were new clearance. They were 99 cents. Somebody bought all of them. They, I remember them telling us they like saw them on clearance. And they're like, yeah, that's cool. And they buy them all. It's kind of neat, you know? Boba Fett. Everybody likes the Boba Fett. Rocket firing Fett is the highest dollar Star Wars piece. Somebody, did you guys see that? <clears throat> Somebody listed a uh, rocket firing Boba Fett, a very rare variant of a rocket firing Boba Fett for like $225,000 on eBay. Um, th that's something you're never going to find. It's it's something that you need to know exists, but finding one is like impossible, especially a real deal one. Yeah, your best bet is to be here in Cincinnati <clears throat> because this is where Kenner was based. And with Kenner being based here, a lot of the employees took home the original models of things, you know, that they, they didn't think they were gonna be worth anything. Or with the rocket firing FET, they threw them away because they weren't allowed to produce them. So some of those made it out and there's a few hundred of them floating around. And there's probably more sitting out there in people's sheds and desk drawers and that kind of thing. I did find about, you know, Forty thousand dollars worth of Star Wars figures in a guy's little shoebox in his desk drawer once at an auction. So it is possible that this stuff is still out there, but you have to know it, and it's not something you're just going to randomly come across. This one, we have five of them. This one sold for nine dollars and ninety-five cents. Far cry from a rocket firing fet, but hey, at least now you know about what rocket firing fets are. I've got a vintage, realistic weather radio. We tried this out, and it did work. JK three. It, it's not it's only been listed for like a couple days it's so quick kind of neat tried it out it worked everything was cool about it i think that they might be a rare color variant i think this is supposed to be black but it's uh actually bronze so that particular one sold for what is that 24.99 24.99 and with that that concludes today's sales and i will see you tomorrow on wednesday Hey guys, welcome back. It's Wednesday and I've got more sales to go over. It's a dreary, rainy day. I do have a topic as well. We sold this overnight right here. 190 bucks for that guy. And this is a shifter. Nothing special about it except it's a no longer made Hearst discontinued Hearst short shifter for the Cobalts. 190 bucks shipped. It's going out to Texas. It'll go in a 12, 12, 12 box. Real easy to ship. I'm just going to put some packing paper in there with it and shove it around it and that'll be good to go there. 
190 there on PayPal, and then another $231.83 on eBay. Pretty easy stuff here as well. I've got an AC compressor delete, one of these guys. Basically, you take apart your AC compressor and you remove the spinning components on the inside, and uh, it has less drag on your motor. I don't know. It's just one of those things. $59.99 for that guy getting out of here. Got some Roblox figures. Let's see. These are down in my toy box right there. Some Roblox figures. $29.99 for this. $98, excuse me. $29.98 for this little package of Roblox figures. I have no idea where we got them. None whatsoever. And in my mind, I'm still I'm pondering this because I watched Grams and Pops. Grams and Pops Vintage. Love their channel. Love those guys. Um, great people. And I like watching their channel. They've been um, good friends of ours for a while. And uh, I saw what they're going through with the... Um, the Transformer buy. If you've seen that, they bought some Transformers, $1,000 worth of Transformer purchase, and it turns out that they were knockoffs. Now, I'll tell you right now, it's the weirdest thing. I have sold a ton of Transformers, and Transformers are unlike any other toy in that Star Wars, He-Man, you name it, Turtles, G.I. Joe, all those knockoffs are not okay for whatever reason. They just don't fly well in those realms. But in Transformers... Knockoffs are a good thing. For whatever reason, people like the knockoffs, and they actually, I've met collectors that collect nothing but knockoff Transformer toys. So it's not uncommon to see knockoffs. So if you're buying Transformers, you might want to look a little deeper in knowing that knockoffs are out there and they are uh, a big deal in the Transformer world. And what they bought was the Transformers that were knockoffs. And uh, that sucks. It really does because they thought that they were real. And if they were real, that was a hell of a buy. But unfortunately, it's not, they still can make money. It's just harder to sell them. You have to sell them on a gray market as opposed to being able to sell them on eBay. So it's more difficult. They can still make money on them. They can still profit. Um, I, I don't think that they're going to end up being hurt in the end, but it, it's just one of those things. But my reason for bringing that up is they're in a sticky situation and they're suing the guy. I'm not really sure what the, 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 you know, opus is for going after the fella, what they're trying to, you know, go get, uh, saying where their damages are. Um, but with, you know, like being very strictly legal is what I'm thinking with that. What would you do in that situation? What have you been presented with a situation? Like I've had to sue people for uh, non-performance. I've had to sue people for, uh, we had a tenant that was renting from us and they no longer paid and they left damages behind after they left. That kind of thing. I've had to sue for that. I've never been in a business deal where I didn't see, I guess this would be a non-performance issue of, they expected real product and they did not perform in delivering real product. They performed in delivering fake product. So I kind of wonder what, you know, how that works. Have you been in that situation? What would you do in that situation? Um, you know, I don't envy them. Unfortunately, it's not a good situation to be in and it's difficult. I, I hope them the best, but I think that that's a very large hill to climb in the legal system, unfortunately, because so much precedence has been given to other cases where um, I just don't, I don't see that being an easy battle to win. Hopefully they do, but uh, even once you do win, you can't milk a stone. You know, does that guy have product that he can return or not product that he can produce to make them whole? Or does he have cash that he can produce to make them whole? Or are they going to have to just have a judgment against him and then eventually file for some kind of lien? And you have to assume that they have something that you can file a lien against because, again, you can't milk a stone. Uh, you can't get, you know, blood out of a turnip, that kind of stuff. It's just not going to happen. So uh, I want to hear about your situations down in the comments below. Let me know if you've ever been in a situation like that where you've had to sue somebody over non-performance or um, sue somebody over a business deal gone awry you know, that relates to reselling like that. Because that is a unique situation where you don't see that come up very often. Getting back to the pools, I've got a camera that sold. Um, again, this is where I believe it's this guy here. Little, I think this is a film camera down in there. Little film camera. 
It is a Konica Minolta Zoom 160C. We have had these a lot. Did we just pick this up up in, we might have just picked this up in uh, Cleveland. I don't really know. I can't remember. But that guy there sold for $39.99. I'm going to wrap it up better than that and put it in uh, something more than just that. So it's not going to go out of here just looking like that. $39.99. Just picked up these video games. We got a lot. And this is crazy. Uh, they sat around. This is why we need to keep video games in stock, but it's so hard because it is such a competitive market. We got a lot of Xbox 360 stuff. There was like 16 games and an Xbox 360, and it was like 80 bucks for everything. It wasn't a great, great deal, but in the end, it'll make us a little money, and it ke keeps the money flowing. This lot of WWE... Uh, is that what these are? WWE wrestling. I'll just call them wrestling. I think it's uh, all the wrestling games, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, all those there in a row, that lot all together sold for $49.99. I think just 17 by itself is worth some decent money, but it's just easier for us to bundle them and get them all gone because when you take 17 out, then you're stuck with 12. That kind of thing, I, I don't know. It, it's just easier to, to make them take the bad with the good and get it all gone for a little bit less, but $49.99. So in total, that means we did $420.31 in, uh, in the day, and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow on Thursday. I am back. It is not Thursday, but as I went to go ship stuff, I refreshed the screen and this had sold. This is a good one. I think I told you about this, you guys. Uh, Driver San Francisco just got it. Or no, we didn't have it. We had it in our pile of stuff to... Um to get cleaned up and we just we took the case off of it and thought maybe we should look it up and found out that it's actually worth $44.99 and it sold in like two days of after listing it. So that sold and that brings our total up to $287.17 for the day, which means like four, what, 77, 17 for the total of uh from yesterday to today. Not too bad, not too bad. That where sales are definitely back kind of where they need to be. And with that, now I will see you on thursday all right guys welcome back it is friday morning we didn't film yesterday because we didn't have many sales and the sales that we did have we didn't have to ship until today so uh it's six seven seven o'clock in the morning and there's a rare angie sighting look at it look at that she's over there she's actually out here when i'm out here and not inside playing video games or doing other stuff because you know that's kind of what we do my dog is out here with me there's kovu hi handsome boy he is the handsomest little man i love that dog and uh we're getting ready for the day we're getting ready to take off we're gonna go away from for the weekend and uh go find the pro picker up in dayton i think that's what we're uh kind of gonna go do this weekend hopefully we'll um try to cross paths with them up up there i don't know uh we want to go to some there's a couple large flea markets up that way and we got an airbnb up there so we're gonna go up that way it's only 45 minutes an hour away it's not far but it's our weekend away and we didn't want to travel that far we've been going all over the place we went gatlinburg we're gonna go down to tennessee later this year a couple more times because we're going to the one 27 sale and we're going to meet up with some friends down there as well so we've got some uh, trips planned uh you know every trip this year is going to be gatlinburg uh go see the trading post pickers go to the 127 sale and go to the tail of the dragon which is also in tennessee north carolina so every trip is going to be to tennessee maybe we have something with tennessee i don't know we just can't get away from it but uh that's neither here nor there got a couple items to ship this morning and get the uh the rest of the stuff out for the week only two items for 7170 so as i said a slow day got a little snap on spark tester this is a little tool that you use to uh, you just put it in the spark plug wire and uh it'll light up when it's got spark that there easy little guy i uh, took an offer 15 dollars. that was a return buyer he told me on the truck he's like they sell these for like 22 bucks on the truck i said well they don't sell them for that on the uh <laughs> On the internet, they sell them for much more. And he's like, well, I got a good deal on the uh, the other piece I got from you. And we were like, oh, okay, we'll keep them happy. You know, this is an actual return buyer. It's not like the guy with the um, the the, the uh, kicker, the, the carpet stretcher. It's not like that, where we're never going to see that guy again. This guy's actually returning. He's trying to buy something else. Um, so we gave him a good deal. You know, 15 bucks, not too bad. Um, I think we have him listed for like 22, 24 or something like that. I can't remember what it was. I just listed this. Angie just listed this. These are from the Pittsburgh buyout. We got a whole bunch of this Farberware um, pots and pans and whatnot. And with that, we 
uh, are getting into listing it. She's doing all that work, all the legwork, because I, I don't know anything about it. Um, but there's a lot, a whole bunch of them. And she just listed this, and it already sold for $34.99. So we're going to get those two little things packaged up, get them shipped out before we head out. And uh, that's what we have for the week. So that's not, uh, not too bad of a week. Lots of car parts. I am taking some car parts with me today, and I have to go look at another car part because I think I have it sold, and the guy's going to come pick it up while we're gone. So he's going to drop cash. I, I do that quite often actually with people I, I just trust them to you know leave money in the mailbox that kind of thing not really in the mailbox but i give them a place to leave some money and uh, they pick up a part you know it's it's not much it's not like i'm selling thousand dollar motors hey pick up the motor and i hope that you leave a thousand dollars it's usually you know a hundred dollars fifty bucks something like that but i'm taking a bumper with me um, because the guy actually lives up by where we will be and um I got to sell a, a clutch. So that's another couple hundred dollars in car parts. Car parts have really been rolling recently. And that's uh, that's a good thing because eBay has been slow. So, and, you know, we're able to ebb and flow with that kind of thing. But I appreciate you tuning in. Let me know what you think. We've been uh, talking this morning with Grams and Pops on Instagram, uh, talking with them about uh, what's going on with their case and all that kind of stuff. So I'm interested to hear what you think. Uh, what's the threshold for you? Does it take more... Uh, would it take more than a thousand dollars? Would it take less than a thousand dollars? Would you go sue somebody over a couple hundred? Would it would it take you know? Um 10,000. I, I don't know. What, what's your threshold? Let me know what the situations that you've been in because I'd like to hear that. And we will see you on the next one.